Hello, Peter here. The last time I said that we were going to do both rotation and hardness in this episode. But the previous episode was a bit long and doing both rotation and hardness would make this one probably just as long. So instead we're going to do hardness and max opacity and leave the mathy stuff of rotation for the next episode. With that said, let's begin. For this episode I restored all values to how they were in the beginning. That means all radius is set to 50 and cut of Z to 56. I also returned the scale on the Z axis of the shadow cube back to 1. You do not need to do that, but I thought it just looked better for this episode. Ok, let's open our ellipsoid mask material function and add the necessary code. The first thing we need to do is to make a bit of space at the end of the uh, function. So let's move this a bit to the side. That will do for now. And then we're going to add a new input and that is going to be the hardness. New function input and we call that one hardness. It is a scalar and we can set the value to 1, the default value. So how is this going to work? The values that come out of this last add here, they are between 0 and 1, so they vary from 0 to 1. And what the hardness value does is to select a value from which to start a linear falloff. Because all these values from 0 to 1 will end up in this if to become either 0 or 1. 1 being uh, that it is uh, black and 0 when it is outside of the ellipsoid. So the hardness value is like a a limit, a border from which to start the uh, a linear falloff, and that will soften off the soften, soften up the the the, uh, the edge of the ellipsoid. So first, we need to um, make a note that is called one minus because we are interesting in what is left after the falloff value, or the, the hardness value. So if it is 0.6, then it means that we have 0.4 left to do a complete falloff from 1 to 0. Now we need to divide that By 1, so the constant value for A is 1. On the other end, yeah, maybe we should put this slightly lower just to give us a bit more space. Then we take the value that is currently being output and subtract the hardness from it to see if we are basically past the, the fall off um, the, the hardness border the point where we have to start doing the, the, the fall off and then we multiply that times the division we had. But we don't need to fall off from 0 to 1, we need to fall off from 1 to 0, so here again we do a 1 minus. And this is the value that we need. Now we need 
the value and do a test. If all this stuff here only needs to be done if a is larger than b. So if the outputted value is larger than the hardness, sort of the border where we start to fall off, only then do we uh, the stuff that is that we just did here. So we plug that in into that one. For all the other values, we can simply create a constant one. Like that. Now we have our original if here. Only instead of this one that is being outputted, output, we remove that constant and hook up the value of this. Because if this one is larger than one, we will output zero anyway. So this is the whole um, hardness bit fixed. Now those of you who are very observant might have seen this little problem here. Here. Yeah. One could argue that uh, if you set hardness to one, this immediately becomes zero and that division by zero happens here. Um, quite a lot of things I found on the on the net about division by zero in materials and some seem to think that's no problem. It is a problem. You can't divide by zero and you should not do it. Why is this working? Well, that is because there is this if here. Division by zero will only happen if hardness is one. If the hardness is one, the A will never ever be bigger than the B. It is impossible. So this part of the code, this whole bit we just did for the hardness, will not be executed if hardness is one. So the division by zero will not occur. Well, let's save this and uh, see if it works. And to do that, we need to go into the material, our blob shadow material, which has now ha have a problem because we don't have the hardness filled in. Uh, oh, I see that it comes on top. I don't like that at all. So what I will do is I will change that to have the right priority, the right sort priority. This one here will have sort priority 7, I think we were at. You see right now the, the whole uh, shadow is uh, not working, but that's because the material is not right yet. Yes, new. you see now hardness is at the bottom. And we create a new parameter. Um, scalar parameter. Now we call this one hardness. And we set the value to 1. And then connect the hardness. Now, save it. And now our shadow should be OK again. Yes, it is. And it is exactly the same as we started. So now, now let's play a bit with the value. 
Let's put this one at 0 0.5. And you see, now there is a kind of fuzzy fall off. Oh, sorry. So, what this means is from the center at where the values of the equation become 0 0.5, from there we start a linear fall off to zero. So that works. If the lower the value, the fuzzier it becomes. So if I would say, uh, let's start at zero, which is the, the other extreme, save. Then you just see a little, a little, yeah, transparent blotch, which can be very useful. But let's give this slightly. No, actually, let's put it back to one uh, to demonstrate the next thing. Save this one and close it, because now we're going to do another little effect that is called the max opacity. So let's open our function again. So what max opacity is going to do is to create, just like in Photoshop or GIMP, uh, sort of a slider where we set the percentage of opacity, the maximum opacity. So at 100, this value will be completely as it is and then gradually decreasing the value it will be less and less opaque. So let's first make a bit of space for that and then we need a new scalar input, a scalar parameter. No, we don't want, we actually need a input function input we're going to name that one max opacity the type for it is a scalar and now let's make sure to set the priority immediately set it to 8 the sort priority now what we need to we want it to be in as a to, to work as a percentage so we're going to multiply and set the constant b value to 0 0.01 then we need to break this link and before we feed it to the function output multiply it with the percentage. So, that should do the trick. Let's see if this works. Oh, we can, by the way, set the, uh, the value to 1. That's a good default for uh, 200. Yeah, all done. Save. Now you see the, the shadow is um, all wrong again, but we need to go into materials in our blob shadow. And you see now we have a new parameter to the function, so we need to create that one. So here we create a new scalar input, scalar parameter. Quite confusing, this input and parameter thing. Anyway, we will call, call that max opacity and we set the default value to 100 here too and then link it up to our function save this now okay everything is good again now let's see if our opacity works 
when we change it. Let's make it 50. So 50%. Save it. And yes, you see, it is not now op uh, not as opaque as, as, as before. It is more transparent. So this can be quite nice if you combine that. So let's make this value slightly higher, say 85%. And then combine that with a hardness of 0.6. Save it, and that gives a pretty nice effect, I would say. So the shadow is now slightly more transparent, and it has a nice soft edge. So that is it for this episode, and then in the next episode we will actually go and have a look at rotation which is a bit more mathy, so I think we did good to uh, leave that out of this one. So see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there are links to other episodes in the series and don't forget to subscribe so you are the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!